All right, so let's review our religion in medieval Europe notes. Um, keep in mind that we're examining how the religion of Christianity developed and changed over time. So kind of the very beginning to where it was at its height in um, Europe. So the role of the church specifically was the fact that it was the center of medieval life, right? It didn't matter who you were, you believed in something. And it might be something along the lines of the Pope is, you know, God's representative on earth, or it was a matter of, okay, I know that there's a God out there because life is pretty terrible if I'm not rich. So obviously there has to be something beyond this. And so the church was the center of life. Everyone believed in some part of it. There was no question of not believing. Every village and town has that church building. The church is responsible for giving education, for giving help to the poor and sick. They're supposed to explain everything, right? If there's an earthquake, if there's a volcano eruption, we need to explain what happened. Well, guess what? God caused it. Um, so the plague, right? Explained by God's anger at people. And so the church is supposed to explain everything and it is the center of everyone's attention. And people really believe that all parts of everyday life related to Christianity. Um, I know it's kind of weird for us because today we're all of very different, diverse cultures, diverse religions. Um, and a lot of us to question, right? We're like, well, why? What? What is this? Why? What if I do this? You guys always ask me what if questions. At this time, there are no what if questions um, because you don't have the energy for it and people don't think that way. So Christianity in itself is a religion based on the life and teachings of Jesus Christ. We don't have a lot of historical records. We do know that he um, existed uh, in the Roman Empire. He was of Jewish origin, and he basically was like, hey, what if everyone could believe in God and earn their way to heaven? And so um, this becomes a really widespread movement. Rome is not super happy, right? Um, the People are really worried, so the Romans start persecuting Christians, aka killing them because they are Christian. But by 313, Emperor Constantine basically realizes they're not going away, and so he's going to make Christianity legal. Um, the start of the Middle Ages, you guys, we now have basically everyone in Europe belonging to the Roman Catholic Church. The Empire of Rome had collapsed, but the church is that last link where, like, you are stable. We will protect you. We are of the old world and we know what you want and so Rome becomes the center of everyone's focus. The church gives leadership during a time when there really are no leaders. Monasteries or communities of monks gave people homes and food and so they become a center part of basically anyone who needs help because you can turn to the church for help. Uh, organization of the church, guys. The Pope is at the top, right? He's the supreme head of the church. The cardinals, they assist the Pope, they advise him, they do the research for him. Archbishops, they're going to oversee larger important areas of land. So like this would be the Archbishop of uh, Northern California. And then bishops govern smaller areas from specific cathedrals. And so maybe there'd be a bishop of San Francisco, right? It's a large area. So it has, an, you know, somebody in charge of it. And then um, priests are in each of the individual buildings. So every church has a priest. Not every church is going to have a bishop because they're in charge of an area, right? And then they report back to the archbishops who see an even larger area, so like multiple towns, multiple cities. Cardinals assist the Pope directly. They're normally in um, positions of power within the medieval uh, times. So like maybe they're like assisting a king and then reporting back to the Pope like, hey, here's what's going on in England or here's what's going on in France. Catholics are the followers of the Roman Catholic Church. Power of the church, you guys, the medieval church was given land basically through kings and queens who were like, hey, why don't you bless our kingdom and make it so that God likes us and we're going to give you land, right? Or wealthy lords who were trying to make sure that they were friendly with the church as well. Sometimes in the very old days, the church actually took land by force. The original popes were actually the fiercest warriors of the time. They made a lot of money through tithes, which is basically taxes on people. And then you need to remember that Latin is the only universal language, right? So the church officials are the only ones who can read and write. And so they have a lot of power in society because they're working for kings and queens. They're working for the high-end nobles. And there's nobody really there to proofread what they're writing because they are the only ones who can read and write. Now, obviously, that's going to change, especially when Charlemagne's like, hey, let's promote education. Um, but they do hold a lot of power, and they hold on to that for quite some time. I forget the slide's all messed up. Sorry. All right. Between the church and the monarchs, you guys, there's a lot of conflict because the question is, the church is like, hey, we're not on that feudalism triangle, and we feel like we should be at the top because we are God's representatives on earth. Everything we say, God has told us to say, therefore you have to listen to us. But the kings are like, no, we are at the top of the triangle because we're chosen by God to rule. So therefore what we tell you to do, you're going to have to do it. Now, this leads us to a very important process called excommunication. Remember that excommunication means that you're thrown out of the church. Now, if you're a peasant and you're thrown out of the church, like, it sucks. 
because when you die, you can't go to heaven. But at the end of the day, it's not the biggest deal in the world because what happens is it's just you, right? It's just you. But if you're a king and you really make the church mad and they excommunicate you, your entire country is excommunicated. Your entire country is denied going to heaven and the people are going to freak out because they're like, hey, our lives suck. We want to go somewhere better after we die. So we talked about Thomas Becket and Henry II. Henry II was king of England. He wanted to bring the church under his control, and he purposely appoints his friend Thomas Becket, the Archbishop of Canterbury. Remember, the Archbishop is pretty high up there, right? He's in charge of the area of Canterbury in England. Well, he's like, hey, I'm going to make a law that says any clergy member who commits a crime is responsible under my laws and not the church's. Because the church would be like, hey, that was bad of you to murder so-and-so, say, you know, 50 Hail Marys and like say, seek God's forgiveness. And Henry was like, no, if you do this, you should die, right? So he was very clear in the fact that the clergy should be under his laws and not the church's. And he thinks, as you know, anyone would, hey, my best friend is in charge of the church now. Let's have him approve this. And well, Thomas Beckett says no. Um, he's like, you can't do that. It's the church's position instead. And so basically what happens is um, Henry does the famous line, who will rid me of this troublesome priest? Some knights overhear him. They think that they want him, that he wants them to go kill um, Thomas Beckett, and they do. And so they go kill Thomas Beckett during Christmas Eve uh, church service. They hack him to pieces on the altar, and um, Henry gets into a lot of trouble. So we did this in our notebooks. You looked at how Christianity looked in Rome versus Christianity in medieval Europe. Just remember that Christianity in Rome, we're talking like early beginnings. It's not that powerful of a force. It's growing, but it's one of those things where it's like, hey, we have very limited power. And then in medieval Europe, they have all the power. They control all of Europe. So it's really important to remember those sections and to remember how Christianity developed and changed over time.